Yeah, I know that some of you are wondering what I'm doing here, uh, working, that is. Uh, I have to admit, when I first heard of my sister's house, I thought it was a comfort soul food restaurant. <laughs> you know, sister's <laughs> house, families, good soul food. Okay, no, that didn't work. Okay. Um, well, just to let you guys know, I did start telling my jokes at an open mic. I'm really sorry for not telling you. I, I was really nervous, but it's a step. Like for all of us to tell our stories, it's a step. God knows I was talk to my family about what had happened. I was embarrassed and afraid that, that they would think everything was my fault. For a while, I, I even thought everything was my fault. He'd work late at the office and, and sometimes wouldn't even come home for dinner. And maybe that's why my jokes were centered around food. You know, I just, I just thought I had to try harder or even try to lighten the mood with, with things that I would say, but nothing worked. I would just accept all of the blame that he would put on me. Then the yelling turned to shoving, and then the shoving turned to beating, and, well, I'm sure you guys know the rest. And then there was Jackie, the nurse at the hospital who stitched up my lip after another bad day. You know, even though I didn't have to say anything to her or to the police, she knew. It's weird when you don't know someone but you can just know. And without a word, she gave me a card to my sister's house. I could still hear her voice. They'll take care of you. I found a safe place that didn't judge me. It gave me advice on how to deal with him and even provided training on how to get a job. But more importantly, people would care about you and to listen. I don't know what I would have done without any of you. Or that one person who gave me a card. She saved the life of a person who didn't even think she had one left. I, um... I think they're almost gone now. You can't see them. Can you? It's, uh, it's taken them a while to disappear. But I guess all the stars will never truly disappear. women supposed to be loving and nurturing, gracious, kind? 
We're not supposed to be violent. We're not supposed to hurt. We heal. But it wasn't like that for me. My abuse wasn't at the hands of a husband or a boyfriend. It, it was my girlfriend. She was my first. She was the one person who loved me and allowed me to be loved. She helped me see that being gay wasn't something that I needed to hide anymore. It wasn't something that I needed to be ashamed of. But then one day, her love started to hurt. We would argue all the time, and her constant put-downs made me feel like I was worthless. She would say that I wasn't good enough for her, and I started to feel like I didn't deserve her. I don't know how many times she would pull me on my shirt, slam me against the wall, or bang my head with pots and pans from my own kitchen. She said that I was too sheltered and that she was doing me a favor because this was the real world. She said that I was just so weak and I just needed to toughen up. And because I loved her, I believed her. I really thought that all I had to do was just toughen up. But I didn't toughen up. Instead, I held it all inside and just became more weak. Getting up in the morning didn't seem worth it anymore. All my days seemed the same. I would look in the mirror and see someone else. Someone with the cuts and bruises and eyes empty of life, full of tears. What happened to me? I don't know when, but eventually, I got to the point where I couldn't just pretend that it didn't exist. I couldn't just sweep it under the rug. It showed. Literally. There were so, so many times I stopped ending it all. I couldn't go on living like this. But thankfully, a friend broke through my sadness and brought me here, to my sister's house. <coughs> they helped me see that the relationship I was in held more abuse than love, and that I could still change my life. <coughs> because of them, I've started the healing process. I found a place where I see myself in others. It's easy to talk to you all. We all have our stories, and it helps to have someone listen. Every day, I remind myself that the first step to loving yourself is realizing you deserve to be loved. 
and now I know love doesn't have to hurt to be real. I thought things were going to be better for me here. He came and promised me the world. Promised to sweep me away to better life in America. We met online. He was very formal at first and I was afraid he might be the cold type. But still he confessed how nervous he was that he had never done this before and that he really wanted to get to know me better and didn't want to say or do anything that might offend me. I too was a little bit hesitant at meeting someone online. But he made me feel comfortable and I liked that he could open up to me. Right away I was taken with his honesty. We got to know each other slowly and I was so excited and nervous when he came to visit me in Hong Kong. Before the year was through, I had fallen for him and we were married. I thought to myself, how could I be so lucky to be married to someone so charming, loving, honest, wealthy, and American. I, I was living the dream. But it didn't take long before my dream turned to nightmare. side of him he never showed before. A demanding, controlling, cruel side. I tried to make a home a loving home for us. I would do all the cooking and cleaning while he was away at work. But he treated me more like safe than life. if I didn't finish my chores or do things exactly as he said, he would hit me and hit me. He would wouldn't even allow me to cook food I enjoy, my foods. He would remind me I was no longer Hong Kong and I could only cook foods he enjoyed, American foods. If I tried to talk to him or stand up for myself in any way, he hit me again, over and over. The beatings. He would remind me if I didn't do exactly as he said, he could call immigration on me. And he would remind me I needed him if I wanted to stay in America. You see, I couldn't go home because I wasn't even allowed to use the phone. He'd say, you don't have any friends here. Who are you going to call? 
Are you going to call home? Why would you want to call a place you wanted to leave so badly? Are you going to tell them you're a terrible wife? He'd say, you know you can't get a divorce. You embarrass your family. Is that what you want to do? Embarrass them? And in a way, he was right. My family didn't believe in divorce. How could I tell them I wanted to come home? I felt so alone. I had no one to talk to. He barely talked to me. He come home from work and it was like I didn't exist unless he wanted something done for him. He'd have his friends come over and he'd call me over and over, barking orders. Lisa, get me this. Lisa, go get that. Lisa, clean this up right now. I felt humiliated as his friends laughed. He would say to them, Asian wives are the best because they are faithful and submissive. American women will walk all over you, but Asian women, they will walk behind you. That, that was my life. During the day, I had the house to myself. I dreaded his coming home in the evening. I never knew what mood he would be in or how he was going to treat me. Would he hit me today? Would he be angry? Would he yell? Or worse, would today be the day he would take his anger too far? <laughs> I'm so tired. <laughs> The fighting, the beating, the pain. I think to myself, this is what I came here for, to be treated like animals. Cowering in a corner for the rest of my life in constant fear. I was in his control and at his mercy. He took away my passport, my ID, my papers, my freedom, my hope, my hope. That's, that's what I knew. I could no longer live like this. Better to be deported back than to put my life at risk. I had to try and get away. But where would I go? I was in a new country with no money, no family, no friends, no one I could talk to. Who would listen? Who would listen to an immigrant like me?